Hello everybody and welcome back to my Gregorius Maths video. And I'm back with the Homological Algebra series. And I apologise for the five month break in between. But, you know, it's back and that's what matters. Mocks are over. I can focus back onto Homological Algebra. And I'm going on to the third talk as part of this series about special modules. So what do I mean by that? I mean the projective modules injective modules and flat modules and all of these are important types of modules classes of modules in homological algebra and we'll just be discussing what they are and their key properties so that when I just casually mention them in a later video you know what I'm on about but before we get on to that we have to talk about two very special functors and those are the HOM and the tensor product functors so let me first start off by defining the HOM functor so Firstly, I need a definition as follows. So if we have x and y, um, I have x and y are R modules, then we have HOM xy is the set of all R module homomorphisms. from x to y. Um, so that's just what it is, it's just a set of maps from x to y forming an abelian group, but more surprisingly maybe, this can also be turned into a functor. It can be both covariant and contravariant depending on which way you define it. I'll show you the definition of the contravariant version is if we have some map f from x to y, well then we can define a map hom f m, and this, now it's contravariant, so it will go from hom y m to hom x m, and it's defined as, so it goes from hom of yeah, y m to hom x, m, and how is it defined? Well, it takes in a map phi from y to m, and then it post composes it, I guess you could say. So this would map to f composed with phi. And this would get sent to, well, it goes from, um, uh, it goes, sorry, 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 sorry. Be phi composed with, um, yeah, phi composed with f, sorry, sorry, wrong way around. Yes, because f goes from x to y, and then we go from y to m, so overall we get a map from x to m. I have that written incorrectly in my notes, it should be pre-composition, f composed with f. Okay, so this is a functor, and it's a contravariant functor, but if we put the, if we put the m first, it'll be covariant, so that also exists. But the important property that, um, or at least for us, the important property of this functor is that it's what's called left exact. That is, okay, so theorem. And also, this map here is uh, abbreviated as F star, um, just because that's quicker to write. So, so if we have an exact sequence 0 to x, then if we go via some phi to y, we go via some psi to z, and we go to zero. If this is exact, then not, it doesn't quite preserve exactness, but what it does do is it preserves its left exact. So if we go the other way now, hom z m, this goes via psi star to Hom y m, this goes to hom x m, sorry for this tiny handwriting, um, this is exact, uh, sorry that's a bit illegible, but yes, this is exact, so this is left exactness of, and I'm not going to prove it because this is not the crux of the talk, this is just a property that we need to know, so... 
Yes, so, okay, that's what the home functor is, and that's the property that we're going to be using later on. Now we need to move on to the tensor product, and the tensor product, unfortunately, is a bit less explicit. Um, so it's, it can be defined two ways. Um, so firstly, um, if we're given... Um, if we're given a right, that's the definition. If we're given a right R module M, left R module uh, N, then um, we can define the tensor product M tensor. Rn. And when it's clear what R is, we'll just omit that notation. Um, we can define it as an abelian group. Um, as an abelian group. Together. With a map. Um which goes um, from the Cartesian product, uh, sorry, um, to, yeah, which goes from the Cartesian product into the tensor product, and it's def it looks like this, so it will take in a, so essentially what this map is doing is it's taking in an element mn, and it's outputting their tensor product. So it's taking an mn and it's outputting m tensor n, um, which of course is an element of this. Um, so, um, and it's together with this map such that the following diagram commutes. So we have m times n and we go via the tensor product to m tensor n, and I'm just going to omit the notation for now. Uh, and we have for any um, group homomorph. Sorry, is this group homomorphism? Yeah, yeah. Such that for any homomorphism f between m cross n and g, we have a unique map um, f tilde, which makes the whole thing commute. Um, now, the good news is. Oh, sh good news is that these this tensor product satisfies some properties which are very useful for actually computing this tensor product. Um, so let me just let me just list them now. Um, so firstly um, every single uh, every element um, of M tensor N can be written in the following form as a sum of these these tensor products here. So as a sum so these the image of this map forms a basis for um, the tensor product. So it says a sum over I of X some X I tensor Y I. Secondly, um, it's it's distributive, distributive. So x tensor y plus y prime is equal to x tensor y plus x tensor y prime. Thirdly, it's okay. So it's right and left distributive. So if we have x plus x prime tensor y is equal to x tensor y plus x prime tensor y. And thirdly, um, it satisfies the, f the following property with multiplication, is that x times r tensor y is equal to x um, tensor r times y. So these are the um, properties which determine the tensor product. 
And this is the more categorical definition. Um, so these are the definitions, and the one more thing we need to know about the tense product is that it is right exact. So I will show you what that means um, right now. Um, so what does that mean? Um, right exact. Okay, so what does that mean? It means um, if we have an exact sequence as we had before, if it's like some phi and some psi, then we have an exact sequence which does not preserve um, injections. So we just go straight from um, um, m tensor x to m tensor y to m tensor z to 0. And you might be wondering, well, how's the tense product a functor, i.e. how is it inducing these maps? Well, it's actually pretty simple. You just do one tensor phi and one tensor psi. So it will send m tensor x will be sent to m tensor phi of x. That's just it. That's, that's what it does. So that's a quite convenient map to have. And um, yeah, this, so it does not preserve injections, but it does preserve surjections. Um, and I have in my notes an example of it not preserving injections, which you can read over if you like, um, but uh, yeah, uh, I'm not going to present it, I'm just going to move on to projective modules. So, okay, so... So we know that the tensor product is right exact, which we'll come back to when we talk about flat modules. The main property we have is the left exactness of, of HOM. So we're going to discuss that now via projective and injective modules. So firstly, let me talk about the projective module. OK, so projective modules. Okay, firstly, I'll review what a free module is because I will be talking about free modules, so just um, for convenience, let me review that quickly. Um, definition um, a free R module. A free R module um, is one with a basis. So what this means is, um, I any element can be written, so there's a basis, um, so some M is free if there exists um, a set of generators E, E1, EN, such that um, any element can be written as Um, R1 E1 plus R2 E2 plus da -da -da, up until Rn En. Okay, so yeah, that's um, what an, so that is just got a basis. That's what a free module is. It's just a module with a basis. Um, Okay, yeah, so, right, that's what a free module is, and one property that these free modules have is known as extension by linearity, which means um, if, we have, if we have this basis E, and we have a map F from E to N, then there's a unique map from M to N, which agrees on all the basis elements. So, more precisely, is um, if we have some function 
um, f from e to n, if we have f from e to n, um, then we have a map um, f bar. So if this is the inclusion map here, uh, I'll call it i, um, if we have an inclusion map, then there is a unique map f bar um, from m to n. And yeah, it's unique. And okay, so what does this mean? This means if we have some function of the basis elements from e to some r module n, then there is a unique map f bar which makes the following diagram commute. And what the commutativity of the diagram means is that it agrees on basis elements. f bar agrees on basis elements. Um, okay, so that's just a nice little property of free modules. Now, we have the following property of free modules as well. Um, so, okay, um, yes, proposition. Okay, so what's our proposition? Um, if we have modules M and N and F, where F is free, uh, I'm just going to draw out the commutative diagram. Okay, so we have a surjection from M to N. We have a free... Um, if we have a free module F and a map G from F to N, then there exists not a unique, there just exists a map H from F to M such that um, this diagram commutes. Um, the only reason I put that zero in there is because this is an exact sequence, so it's kind of nice. Um, so this, and this is not a unique map, this just exists and this commutes. And I will actually prove this. Um, so the proof. Um, so let's say x is the basis of um, f. So if we have some x in the basis, then obviously we have... Um, then we can consider the image g of x. So g of x is in n. Now, f is surjective, right? So, um, there must be some element, so since f is surjective, so there exists some mx um, in m, such that mx, sorry, such that um, f of mx is equal to, um, g of x, right? Um, why is that? Because f is surjective, that's the definition of surjectivity. So, what we do now is we define h bar, sorry, h bar, h prime from the basis to m as the map um, which um, chooses m of x. So, h prime of x is equal to mx. So what is mx? Um, so it just chooses the element that satisfies this condition, which, which necessarily exists because of subjectivity. But extension by linearity shows that if we have this map, we automatically get a map from f to m, and so we get our map and it all commutes. Right. Yes, okay, lovely. So in a very similar fashion, we can define um, projective modules. Um, so definition, and indeed every free module is projective as you'll see now. Um, an R module P is projective.
if, and again, I'm just going to draw out the diagram, um, but it looks exactly like this, actually. If we have P, this goes down to, so there exists some H such that the following diagram commutes, so some G from P to N, and some surjective um, F, from M to N, this diagram commutes. Okay. So, okay, so obviously we can see that every free module is projective. It is not necessarily true that every projective module is free, um, obviously, because otherwise I'd just be talking about free modules. Um, and now we're just going to talk about how this relates to what I was talking about before, with the Hormon stuff. So let me just quickly rub out my board and then I can get on to that. Uh, um, yeah, so while I rub out my board, the projective and injective modules relate to the Hom functors and they set us, they extend it so that it's not just left exact, it is exact, I preserve exactness, which is a very helpful property to have. So the following conditions are equivalent. Um, firstly, um, P is projective. Secondly, um, hom, the functor, hom r p is exact. And thirdly, um, there exists some r module q such that p plus q is free. Um, and I'm not going to show every single direction, um, I'm just going to show two of them. So I'll show that 1 implies 2 and 3 implies 1, and the rest of them you can try for yourself, I guess, if you wish. Um, so yeah, proof. Okay, so firstly, um, okay, 1 implies 2. 1 implies 2. So P is projective implies that this Hom functor thing is, is exact. Um, so what we need to do is we need to show that the Hom functor project, uh, preserves surjectivity because that's the only piece that's missing from the left exactness. So we'll let um, M from um, F from M to N be surjective. Subjective. Then, um, we we um, have a map. We have a map from home P M to home P N F star, and what it is is F composed with um, some map. Uh, sorry. Yeah, some map from phi to, from P to N. So you just post compose this time. Um, so we need to show that this F star is a surjection. So if we're given some G in here, so if we're given some G from P to N, um, then, because P is projective, let's draw out the diagram. We have our G from here to N. We have our F, uh, sorry, our M from F to N. F is surjective, and therefore, there exists some H. So that implies that there exists a H such that G equals F composed with H. But this is precisely 
So if g can always be written in this form, then this map here is surjective. So HOM is exact because it's already left exact. This part is just showing that it preserves surjections, which is the only part missing. Um, and this is precisely just from the definition, by definition. So that's good. Now we just show that 3 implies 1, and the rest of them can be left as um, exercises, I suppose. So 3 implies 1. Um, so how do we do this? Oh yes, this is the um, statement that there exists a Q such that P plus Q is free. And this implies that P is project projective. So, um... Okay, let's suppose that it's true. Then, let's form the diagram. So we have some free module F, so isomorphic to P plus Q. Now this, we can send it down to P via just um, a projection. And this we can send down to just some N. Um, so these are just arbitrary maps. We have our M, and our M is a surjection. Um, eh? And by the earlier proposition, which I proved here, we can fill in, we can fill in a di a, some H, like this, so that the diagram commutes. We call this G. Um, actually, we'll call the composition, we'll call this map, we'll call this map G. Um, now, we need to construct a map from here to here. So how do we do that? Um, well, we'll define it as H tilde, and we'll simply just s state that H tilde P is equal to H of P zero. And with this, this triangle here commutes, and um, yeah, so therefore P is projective. So 3 implies 1. And the rest of them can be left as exercises. Um, those are the only two I have in my notes, so I'll just pretend that I've proven the whole thing. Q is true. But what's the takeaway? Because this is in my exposition of projective modules. Takeaway is, if P is projective, if and only if, it makes the whole co covariant version, may I add, the covariant version of the Hom functor exact. Injective as are the dual, and so they'll make the contravariant fun version exact, as you're going to see in a second. But that's the takeaway for projectives. It makes this covariant HOM exact. That's the takeaway. Now, uh, okay, I'm going to move on to injective modules. So, okay, injective modules are dual notion. Yeah, yeah, okay. Right. Firstly, let me define what an injective module is. So, um, definition. Um, an module E injective is injective if we have a commutative diagram that looks like this. <coughs> so now we have an injection F. And we have a map from M to E. And there exists a H like this. Okay? Again, H is not necessarily unique. So, okay, it's literally the dual surjection became injection. We flipped all the maps. This is the diagram we're left with. So, Let's just get straight to it, right? 
let's just prove the Hom exactness property. So let me just do that on this side of the board. Um, <coughs> and while I rub out the board, I might as well discuss um, what else I'm going to talk about. Um, the flat modules are um, to do with the exactness of the tensor product, as we'll see. And um, there's actually a cool application of the snake lemma, which we'll be looking at at the very end of this talk, of this uh, um, video, um, um, which we'll see afterwards. Um, but firstly, let's get on, get on with this vis-a-vis -vis the injective modules. So theorem, right? So let me do this theorem. Um, e is injective. If and only if Hom is exact. And remember, this is the contravariant version. So, proof. Proof. Um, first, of all, let's show the forward direction. So, given some injective E. Um, we have that this is exact. So, we have to show that um, if, well, let me just write it actually all out, if we have this exact sequence, we need to show that this is exact, it's because the HOM will flip us the other way around, remember? So it's a different castle of fish. Uh, X, E. <coughs> now, because it's left exact, um, most of it actually um, is already done for us. What we need to show now is that it preserves um, injection, sorry, we have to show that given an injection, this map here is an injection, it turns this map here, this induced map here, into a surjection. That's what we need to do. Because the rest of it is done for us, we just need to show that this last map is in Surjection. So, we're going to do it in a very similar way to before, using the definition. Um, so, if we're given an injection from M to N, um, and we have E. Okay. Oh, sorry, let me just call this... Actually, yeah, let me just call this X and Y then. Um, I have it as M and N in my notes, that's why. Um, okay, so, let's take, um, some map like this, G, um, this can be our map, um, okay, so, what am I doing? Right, we just need to show that this map here, th we just need to show that, um, yeah, because we need to show that any map, yeah, I've got my bearings now. <coughs> we need to show that any map in HOM XE, i.e. some arbitrary G in this diagram here, can be written as an element of the form F composed with HOM some map like this. But, of course, that's the definition of injectivity. So, that is, um, G is equal to F composed with H, or is, sorry, H composed with F, which implies that G is in the image of our map, which shows that it's, which shows the forward direction and the backwards direction is similar. 
I, uh, I nearly um, messed up there, but um, we just need to show that this map was a surjection, which meant that any map from X to E can be written as the composition. That follows almost from definition. <coughs> um, so, that's that. Okay. Um, okay, um, I have a proof here that um, the product of injective modules is indeed projective. Sorry, injective. Product of injective modules is injective. My throat is starting to get sore, so I'm going to omit that in this video, and I'm just going to move straight on to one last property of injective modules. Um, <coughs> and you can read the proof for yourself if you like. Theorem. Um, if E is injective, then the following sequence splits. Where um, A and B are just arbitrary mo uh, modules. Okay, so how are we gonna prove this? Uh, let me do this in purple actually. Um, Okay, so, this um, thing will split, let me just write it all out again, this thing splits, um, if and only if, we can construct some map H, such that F composed with H is just the identity. So, because F is an injection, we can... We can write um, this, and then we'll just choose a map like this, the identity. And because E is injective, this is just a special case. We are guaranteed to have a H, such that F composed with H is the identity. And, sort of, excuse me, and thus, the sequence splits. So that's beautiful, isn't it? It's just an application of um, our in definition of injectivity, just with the identity cleverly placed in there. Okay, we're nearing the end. We just have to go through flat modules and then we will be done. So, um, actually, let me just start a new, fresh new board for this. Um, Flat modules, while they're about, I think I've said this about 10 million times, but flat modules are preserving the exactness of the tensor product. So, um, um, projective modules preserve the exactness of the inje uh, sorry, of the covariant Holm functor. Injective modules preserve the exactness of the contravariant Holm functor, and finally we get on to um, flatness. Okay, so, in fact, we don't even have any sort of special definition. Our definition is literally the following. <clears throat> we say that F is flat, If um, for any modules e for any modules and maps that form an exact sequence as follows, um, like.
like so. This sequence, which we get by just tensoring everybody by F, um, also is exact. Um, uh, this is... Okay, that's the definition. So, what do I have here? Um, okay. So, there's two, two, there's two theorems I'm going to prove about these, and then um, that's that. So, firstly, what's the first theorem? Um, firstly, a ring is a flat module over itself. Um, secondly, given some collection of modules, um, MI, the direct sum is flat if and only if M each MI is flat. Three, and these, um, are all just properties of flat modules. Um, three is all projective modules are flat. Okay. Good, let's prove, um, okay. Um, let me do the proof over here. Okay, proof. Okay, so for number one, how are we going to do that? Um, okay, so we need to show that um, tense product will preserve injection, because that's the only thing that's missing. So, let's have some injection I from A to B. Then, if we have isomorphisms sigma from A to R tensor A, given by um, A maps to one tensor A, and tau, from B to R tensor B, given similarly, then we have a commutative diagram as follows. Uh, A to B via I, then we go down to R tensor B via R tau, we go down to R tensor A via R sigma, and we go here via one tensor i. So this commutes. Um, and so the commu commutiv commutativity of this diagram means that um, one tensor i is an injection because it's equal to sigma inverse tensor r, uh, sorry, com composed with i, composed with tau. Or is it the other, sorry, the other way around. Other way around. Tau composed with i, composed with sigma inverse. Which is basically just going dot, dot, dot. And so because it's composition of all of these things, it is itself in injection, which is all that we need because this is already right exact, so we just need to show that if this is an injection, this is an injection, which is true. Perfecto. Um, number two, number two. Let's move swiftly on, number two. Um, okay, so... Um... If we, okay, if we have the diagram as follows, M I, we have the direct sum 
of these mi tensored with a and this goes via 1 tensor i to the direct sum of these mi's tensored with b um, we can go down here to the direct sum of all mi tensor a and this is now the direct sum of those guys and we can go similarly we can go across like this tensor b we can go down and this map here is some phi where the vertical maps well what are the vertical maps doing they're sending some mi um, tensor A, this just gets sent to mi tensor A, just like that. And um, mi tensor B, similarly, mi tensor B gets mapped to mi tensor B, like so. One tensor I is the obvious map, and um, this map phi acts by sending um, sends m i tensor a gets sent to m i tensor i of a, like so. Now. By the preceding um yes, yeah, so okay, so um right, yes, yeah, so. This map here is an injection. If and only if this map here is an injection, similar with similar reasoning to this, this map is an injection if and only if this map is an injection. And therefore, we have that the direct sum, uh, sorry, we have to, we have, each mi has to be flat, basically. Um, I don't think I explained that very well. Each mi has to be flat, um, and so we can conclude that each module is flat if and only if the direct sum is flat itself. Um, I hope that makes sense. Um, but yeah, I hope that makes sense. Um, I think I, um, explain it better Let's do F of U I, let me just see what I've written here Yeah, okay, so, um, what, yeah, 1 M I tensor I is injective if and only if this guy is injective, so um, the direct sum of modules is flat if and only if each and every one of them is flat. Um, okay, so we still have to prove number three. Um, okay. Thankfully this number three is a bit easier. Um, a module is, re remember that a module is projective if and only if um, it is a direct sum of a free module. So, um, a free module is isomorphic to um, a direct sum of copies of R. And so, because, okay, so it's just a combination of 1 and 2. Any free module is 
a direct sum of copies of R, but any module over R itself is itself flat, and the direct sum of flat modules is flat, so we get that. The big direct sum is flat, and um, Therefore, a direct summoned of a free module is also flat, and so p. Okay, so if we have p plus q is fl is 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 free. Sorry, is flat. Then both p and q must be flat, and so p is flat. So let me go over that one more time. We write it as P plus Q. Now, P plus Q is free. Free modules is isomorphic to a direct sum of copies of R. Now, R, because of um, part one, is flat over itself. And if we have a direct sum of flat modules, it that itself is flat. But, if this is flat, that's only true if and only if both P and Q are flat, and so P is flat. Yes, there we go. Um, and now I just want to show you one cool application of the snake lemma, which we can use to prove um, an interesting result about flat modules. And then um, the talk is finished, the lecture is over, and we can move on to something a bit more cool, I believe, um, I have written up. Um, I can't even remember what it is that I've written up for the next video, but I do remember it's more exciting than this. Um, so stay tuned, um, is all I'm telling you. Um, okay, so if we have an exact sequence, from 0 to n to m to e to 0 to, I'll call it f actually, to f to 0, where f is flat, and if this is exact, then we have a s exact sequence for any module e as follows. So any exact sequence uh, so, uh, sorry, for any E, this is exact, as long as F is flat. Um, so, firstly, represent E as a quotient represent as a quotient Um, of a flat L by an exact sequence um, 0 to K to L to E to 0. So since F is flat, um, we can tensor this guy by F and get another exact sequence. Okay, now we can write the following commutative diagram um, with all of the rows being exact and stuff like this. So firstly, by the flatness of F, we have that it preserves injections. So we have F tensor K to F tensor L, like follows. That is um, exact, that is, sorry, injective. Um, now, um, we can um, do, we can tensor, because remember the tensor product is right exact, so we can just go ahead willy-nilly 
and tensor everybody by k. Like so, and this is, this is exact. Similarly, we can do the same thing with, um, we can do the same thing with L, but remember that L is flat itself. So, um, we're in business. We can just do M tensor L, uh, N tensor L, and we have zero over here because F, uh, sorry, L is flat. So when we tensor everybody, it does preserve injections. And, um, okay, just for completeness, I'll fill in the dot hole diagram. Um, we can tensor this guy here by L and we go K L E and M tensor E. So everybody in this diagram is commuting is exact, all of the good stuff. But the important part is this. This is the shape of the snake lemma. And what the snake lemma will tell us is that the um, um hold on a minute. Yeah, sorry, I forgot. Also, forgot to draw on a, an arrow. My apologies. What the, the snake lemma will tell us is precisely what we need. Is that the quotient that the that the co kernel if we map? Okay, so we have the kernel of this guy. Okay, so we have the kernel of this map here, and the kernel. So if you have no idea what I'm talking about, kernels. Firstly, look up what the snake lemma is, and then quickly come back to my explanation. If you do not snake lemma, then of course you're following him. Okay, the kernel of this map here is, well, let's look at it. Kernel of this, sorry, image of this equals kernel of this. So that's zero, so we have zero. Then, the co-kernel of this is precisely n tensor e. And similarly, because we represented it as this quotient, and similarly, the co-kernel of this is, you guessed it, m tensor e. Booyah! Precisely what we needed for injectivity, and because the tensor product is right exact, plus that, we get the full exact sequence. Snake lemma, always on top. Yes. Proven. Okay, so, yes, we used the snake lemma to prove this cool fact about flat modules. And now we are at the end of the video. I have no, long, no idea how long I've been recording for. But there we go. We covered projective modules, injective modules, flat modules, and the tensor and the HOM functors all in one video. So whenever I mention any of those things, you can just click back on this video and hopefully you'll know what I'm talking about. And now we can move on to some exciting homological algebra. The first one I've remembered is um, singular homology. And then I talk about sheaves and I talk about Taranko homology at some point, And I talk about this and that. And it's all going to be great from now on. It's going to be cool stuff. It's going to be good stuff. And uh, yeah, I hope to see you in the next video. Goodbye.